We were tuned in. So the thumbnail was a thumbnail from my crib, man. That was barbell squats. We ain't doing no barbell squats today, guys. We hit barbell squats on Sunday. You guys go watch the short that I have up there from a few days ago. Like I said, it's gonna be old calisthenic body weight based. I got the kettlebell with me. You guys already know. We got the 60, ah, 20 pound vest on. And we're gonna do a full leg day routine today, guys. High volume, this is gonna be for strength build, for hypertrophy and for strength, right? Power, we're gonna work on all three energy systems. Listen, if you guys are struggling with ankle mobility and being able to get into a deep squat, you guys see people putting their uh, feet on weights so they elevate their heels, right? Or you'll see squat shoes or weightlifting shoes that have an elevated heel. That's the whole people's ankle mobility, right? Not that I struggle with that. I can pretty much squat pretty easily as to grass with flat shoes and barefoot. But I love to go on this. These, these are uh, these crunch benches that they have in these parks, right? And it's the lowest. This is the easiest one, right? It's not to incline. We're gonna do three exhaust sets, guys. We're gonna do a warm up for our legs. Keeping the tension, I'm gonna go past 90, but I'm not gonna drop to where I lose tension on my legs. I'm gonna go for 15 to 20 reps just to pump some blood up before we get into the real work. Like I said, those were not full lockout. I was keeping tension, so I was coming to just a full lockout, and I was going past 90. But listen, guys, remember, you guys can squat actively and passively. Remember, guys, active position, whether it be squatting, hanging on a bar, active means that there's muscle engagement. Passive means you're just hanging, and all your weight is just being supported by your joints. There's no muscle engagement, right? So let me demonstrate a passive squat to an active squat, right? So passive, remember, no engagement. This is what you see toddlers do. When you're an infant, infants are really good at getting into an actual squat position with good form, right? You're gonna see infants, when they're resting, they go like this. And they hang out down like this, right? This is a passive squat. And you guys can see, I have my 20 pound vest on right now. So remember, passive, no engagement of the muscles. We're just resting. All of our weight is down, being supported on our ankles and knee joint basically and our hips. Now, active, we're, in, we're gonna engage the quads. We're not gonna lose tension in the muscle. So an active squat will not be that deep, right? So it would be down to here. Now I'm holding full tension on my legs still. Show you from the side. Here, there's still full tension. If I drop down like this, I lose the tension. If I stay here, I'm still past 90. Full tension on the quads. So, like I said, this is gonna be a workout where we're, missing, where we're mixing up power work, hypertrophy work, and some strength training, right? So typically, power sets and strength sets are lower volume rep ranges, right? You're really working on those type two, those explosive, those explosive muscle fibers when you're training power. And now typically they tell you, if you're going to a workout session, and you're gonna be hitting multiple modalities, you should always start with the power or the explosive movement first. The reason being it's going to be the most neurologically demanding. It's going to provide, it's going to uh, make your body fire up the most motor neurons. Everything's going to have to be more focused for the power slash explosive sets, right? Your body's going to have to really learn to control itself. At the same time, be explosive and under good range of motion and good control. When you're just repping out simple reps like this, it's not much neurologically demanding. You don't have to worry about stabilizing at the set. You just go through contraction and uh, eccentric motions during the exercise, right? Explosiveness, now you have to learn how to be 
You have to come out fast. You have to explode out or whatever exercise you're doing. You have to stabilize. So a lot more comes into play. A lot more neurologically demanding, like I said. So if you're going to be working, that's why they say if you're learning muscle-ups, right? Say you're on a pull day and you're trying to learn muscle-ups. You should train your muscle-ups before your pull-ups. It's more of explosive movement. It requires more central nervous system at uh, activation and more neurological uh, adaptations too because you have to think about the movement more than you have to think about just doing a regular pull-up or a regular squat. So, you guys see, you got, this, you got two benches in the park. You got the high one and the low one. So the high one is just about knee high, maybe two and a half feet, not too high. So we're gonna be doing, let me see what I missed here, guys. Charles, you have a dislocated knee. You can walk but not run at full speed. What's the most effective workout to build your calves? Uh, you can try jump roping, bro. Jump roping will really help. Try jump roping with a uh, weight vest on too. It's gonna constantly keep you on your toes, constantly keep those calves calf flexed, and it won't put too much strain on the knee because you're not gonna be doing any flexing of the knee or extending of the knee. So try jumping rope or just single, you guys can do simple calf raises with a load on. All right, guys, so we're gonna be doing a variation of an explosive jump or what's known as a box jump. So typically if I'm doing box jumps, I like to do them for height, right? I like to see how high I can go. But since we're limited and all we have is two foot benches, how do we make the reps harder? One, I got a 20 pound vest on, and two, we're gonna be jumping for distance now, distance and height. So remember, explosive movements, these explosive, body weight jumps, they're going to be a lot more neurologically demanding than just regular body weight squats, right? Same thing, if you do a jump squat, you got to control the whole repetition, right? You have to land stable, you gotta, you got to stop your knees from caving in. Everything has to be working in unison, your body has to learn to stabilize and stop momentum at a dead stop and then be able to produce force again from a dead stop position. So. Pops and Scrap just showed up. Hold on, guys. I gotta feed my dog. I brought the food out. We are hungry. You guys are wondering what Scrap's eating. He's eating sweet potato, chicken, and a little bit of free dog food what else did I miss guys yo Gerard what up my bro thank you for tuning in yo blocky what up let's go leg day you already know Emilio fasting when doing cardio I think it's a great idea because I feel like you're gonna be burning through those fat stores but I wouldn't resist this train after Charles I'm 510 like 59 161 162 all right, guys, so let's get into these explosive jumps. Remember, I got the 20 pound vest on, and we're gonna be going for distance and height. So, look, this is easy, right? It's nothing for me, right? So, to make the, the rep harder, I got the 20 pound vest on, and we're gonna be jumping for distance. So, we're gonna stay about four feet from the bench. We're gonna start in the 90 degree hold, explode, you land down like this, and then come up. That's why I'm saying these are more neurologically demanding. You have to learn to control the rep, land in control of the whole movement. Scrap. All right, so we go about five to six reps, three to six reps in each set. That was one, two. Remember, explosive power moves. You're only able to produce X amount of effort for so many reps, right? You can't do this for 10 to 12 reps. You're not gonna be able to produce that force. Three. Four. Five, we'll go one more. And we'll rest about two minutes in between each set, guys. Active recovery is key, bro. Yesterday was an active recovery workout for me. If you guys watched Monday, we were live. We did two five-minute drills. 
one with 50 pounds and the second one body weight. And that's all we did on Monday. 300 total reps, 15 minutes of total work. Tuesday, yesterday, I actually came out here. I was filming with That's Good Money. And it was an active recovery day for me because it was just beginner routines that I was filming. And uh, so like I explained to you guys, I hit legs twice a week. I train shoulders and back together, legs and chest. Take a day off, upper body, lower body day. But for the last week, as you guys know, both of my hands are still ripped up. They were healing, but after I filmed yesterday with That's Good Money, they all ripped up again. So we're back to training legs. So remember, I train on my first leg day or one out of two leg days a week. One day is where I'm working max effort for low, right? My intensity, I'm working three, one to three rep ranges, heavy, heavy weight. So Sunday, you guys watched the short I put up. You guys saw me doing 235 for 10, then a front lever. That was my 10th set. Sets one to nine, well sets, let's say one, two, and three, we're building up to 290. So sets three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, was all me doing 290 pounds for singles. So I was doing 290 for one for about seven sets. And on the 10th set was a back off set of 235 for 10 reps to get that volume in. And on my second leg day, which you're seeing now, is where I do more, the intensity is less, meaning the load, but the volume in the work is more. I'm doing way more work, way higher volume sets. So, and you guys can see, guys, I think I don't train legs. We out here two leg days a week. Push, pull legs, bro, I love it. One of my favorite routines to follow also. Bro, Charles, man, you, I'm in the same boat as you. 230 pounds of muscle, work out for maybe 10 more years, it might happen, man, but natural is not gonna happen overnight. Unless you're a newbie and starting out, you may be able to gain like 15 pounds of muscle pretty easily, but if you're, it all depends on your level right now. Let's go, guys, set two. You guys can do this body weight too guys doesn't have to be it let's go hit the like button guys let's get the likes up appreciate all you guys that's his water bottle right there yeah go ahead i don't know i mean I, it's on it's it's windy out here too guys so i'm on the tripod so if it's shaking it could just be from the wind i'm not i have no one holding the stand and like i said we're supposed to be like 65 today but it didn't turn out to be that warm Exactly, bro. Follow, the, follow the, the methods I lay out, guys. If you're consistent, you're going to make progress and make gains. Let's go. Set three. Guys, if someone tells you 
they can't do skills because they got heavy legs or they don't train legs so they can do skills. Don't listen to me. Put the 20 pound vest on with blood in the legs. That's why people say, when I say I do levers after my legs and it's harder, try doing a front lever after you do legs because now the reason why your legs are heavier because you got a ton of blood rushing to them, right? A bunch of fluid is in your legs right now. So holding them up, it's a little tougher, but no excuses. And we got the vest on. When you're working, explosive type power exercises, you want to prioritize them in the beginning of the routine because it's going to be the most demanding. Three sets, I did five, five, and six, or six, five, five. So only 16 reps, but my legs got a nice pump in them right now, and I was really starting to feel a little fatigue on that third set. So now remember, we work power first. I told you we're going to be hitting on about just about all four modalities of uh, muscle training, right? So you can do power explosive, you can do strength training, you can get in that hypertrophy work, then we can do more endurance work. We're gonna touch on everything and we're gonna work our way down. So we're gonna work with the most neurologically demanding to the least neuro neurologically demanding. So after those explosive movements, now we're gonna get into more strength training. If I was to do this exercise first, what we're gonna get into now, I usually would not do power training. So I um, did power training first to show you guys and now we're gonna do some single leg unilateral strength work but if i really wanted to get stronger with the this unilateral work i would prioritize it first and keep the explosive exercises out typically but again it's all what the goal is and the purpose of your session so and i want to get a lot of work in today and day one i mean sunday when i trained legs that was me training for strength my priority was strength there doing the 290 for singles so today i didn't have to prioritize strength first that's why i'm keeping it as a second exercise sets of five reps of single leg pistol squat variations and each set will get a little harder too guys yo let's get the likes up guys and gerard appreciate you my bro super thank chat. you for the donation super, super chat. chat they got it appreciate you my bro you already know jenna no wind stopping us we're out here in the cold cold stops nothing Caloric surplus and lifting heavy is key, Charles. If you're trying to gain muscle, you're gonna have to be in a surplus, absolutely. As far as lifting heavy, that's not gonna, I'm not gonna say 100%, that's gonna be the best method. Utilize all three, lift heavy, and then work on volume two, work in the hypertrophy rep range, those six to 12 rep range. The more you can rep, the stronger you'll be. And the stronger you are at a given weight, the more you can rep at a less weight. So implement every type of training modality. You could keep the cardio and the endurance work to a minimum, but uh, remember, when you're in a surplus, your body could also handle more workload. Don't get, don't forget that. Don't just do strength training, because then you're gonna. Don't just do strength training where you're doing low volume work every session. Low intent, meaning the intensity is high for the set, but you're taking long break periods, letting yourself recover. You could get a lot more effort and work done when you're doing a little higher reps. But mix it both up. All right, going on to the low bench. So now we're gonna 
Now we're in a deeper range of motion for the pistol squats, more activation of the quads. legs. Five and five again. That low bench gets me just about past 92. So again, more contraction, more activation of the quads in themselves. Let's go, Bulky. Try that pistol squat. I'm telling you, that's how you're going to learn them. Then I'll show you the next variation, which is going to be the hardest. Uh, maybe, maybe not. No, you're not in it. If you're fat and want to build muscle, you still need to be in a club. No, man. If you got body fat and you're trying to build muscle, you got muscle hidden under all that fat as long as you're training. You gotta lose that fat to reveal the muscle. And let's just say you're 109, let's just give for instance, you're 185, 20% body fat right now. Say you're my height, 5'9", 185 pounds, 20% body fat. If you get down to 10% body fat at 165 pounds, which is a 20 pound weight loss, you're going to look 185, maybe 190 pounds. You're gonna look bigger than you did when you're fat. Why? Because again, muscle, it's gonna show all the work, it's gonna make you look defined, it's gonna give you that definition that you're looking for. You can never outwork fat. You cannot just start building muscle to fill out fat. It will never, ever happen. All right, guys, so we got three pegs here that we could work on, low, medium, and high. We're gonna stay on the medium one for this because it's gonna be the hardest variation of the pistols. So now, we're gonna start all the way down. Uh, one, come back down, up, two. So we're focusing solely here on the concentric portion of the left from a deep range of motion, not working on the negative, just solely focusing on pushing out from a deep hole. Up, three, two more, up, four, Five. Five on each leg, guys. One. Two. What's up, buddy? What's up? What's up? Three. Woo, two more, guys. These are really requiring the most recruitment right now of the muscle fibers because you're really going to feel them contracting when you're pushing out of that hole. A lot of tension on those quads. Last rep. Ah, ah, five. Woo. Woo. That's going to really hit the quads deep all the way up almost into the hip flexors. So we did three sets of five to six explosive jumps. Three sets of five single leg pistol squats. Now the fun work's gonna come, guys. My favorite. So I'm gonna demonstrate to you guys an exercise right now. And Saturday, I think we could do that uh, cooking thing. So we'll talk about it later. All right, guys. Now we're gonna get into some more volume, more hypertrophy work. Again, my favorite exercise to shape the legs. Ever since I started doing these, I've noticed so much more definition in the entire quad. The sweep on the sides, I don't know if you guys can notice it right now. Light not be that good. But 100% notice way more quad sweep from doing these single leg Bulgarian split squats, right? So we're going to do them weighted. But listen, I'm going to demonstrate how you guys can use a resistance band 
to make this exercise harder. And you guys know I got the 20 pound vest on. So step one is gonna be the 20 plus the band. So look, remember this is a unilateral exercise. We work one limb at a time. So we're gonna work the right leg first on these. So what we're gonna do, right leg is gonna step on the band. We're just gonna lift it right above our neck. And then we're gonna put our left foot on the bench. And we're gonna set up for our squat. Remember, Bulgarian split squats, unilateral exercise. Really gonna work stabilization of the knee and ankle and it's gonna isolate one leg at a time. So from here guys, I always like to tend to have weights in my hand. One, remember this band is gonna apply more tension. So we got the 20 pound vest plus the band. Set one 15 reps each leg. And we're not locking out at the top. We're coming to 95% just before lockout. Control that, guys. Two more. Two. That's one. Woo! Really gonna blow the legs up. Remember, 15 each leg. Now we're gonna switch to the left leg. So band stays wrapped around the neck. Just step on that band with your left foot. And then reset up. Right foot comes back. Step out, guys. And look, first thing you guys wanna do, shift your weight back, right? You don't wanna be leaning over your leg here. Because if you're leaning over your leg and you go to squat, your balance is going to be off, your torso is going to make you fall forward. You always want to maintain that upright posture, chest up. I always like to make the fist, pretend I have dumbbells in my hand. Of course, I'm going to keep more core engagement. Let's go, 15 reps. Plus the red band, lightest band. So listen, that tension, bands are gonna provide a total different type of stimulus, right? At lockout, the tension is gonna be the greatest, but then when you come down on that eccentric, you gotta fight the forces of the band snapping back also. So the eccentric load is also gonna be greater when using bands. Also an excellent tool to utilize when you're trying to increase the speed of your repetitions. And that goes for any exercise, whether you're trying to do get faster dips, get faster push-ups, get faster squats get faster pull-ups. It's all gonna help you work on that speed aspect as well. I don't know if I missed anything. Let's go guys. Let's get the likes up. You guys can feel free to donate. It's always appreciated. the 60. Isaiah was good. Alright guys, second set, 20 pound vest with the 60 pound kettlebell. So 80 pound Load for each leg individually. And when I talk about volume, right? So that's why I like to do loaded reps. You're never gonna see me hitting 30, 40 reps a couple of squats. I don't like to do that much work. I feel like it's more endurance training. You always, maybe you'll see me hit tops 20 reps, but again, I always like to do it loaded too to make that intensity harder so I don't ever get into that. So I get that lactic acid build up in a lower range threshold than I would just body weight. Uh, hold on. Slim. Yeah. So you can do 9 or 9.30 or 11 or 11.30. 9 and 9.30, what will the deal be after? 9 or 9.30 is fine. All right, set two. 10 to 12 reps each leg. So remember now, we're gonna work the right leg first again, guys. So the left hand holds the kettlebell. Up the weights, if you're doing two dumbbells, Obviously, you're gonna have a weight in each hand, or if you're doing two kettlebells, whatever. If you're doing one, the weight stays in the opposite limb that's working. So, for working the right leg, the left hand holds the weight. Head up, chest up, guys. Shift your weight back. One, two, three, four, 
80 pounds lowered in each leg right there guys CBD post workout I love CBD I wouldn't do it right away after the workout it's gonna hinder your body's own natural ways of, of lowering inflammation no matter what when you train your body's gonna have elevated cortisol levels it's gonna be more inflammation state because the muscles are swollen Joints are swollen. Not a bad state because you know your body knows how to recover. If you start doing like vitamin C post workout and CBD post workout, it's going to blunt the body's own way of handling that inflammation and coming back down to homeostasis. So do it later at night before bed. I wouldn't do a post workout. When you say myo reps, do you mean myo, M Y O? Garrett? Myo reps, MYO reps. Yeah, that's basically myo reps. The purpose of them is for like maximum muscle growth, right? Because myo reps, remember, you're doing one set of like 12 to 15 reps where you're failing around that 12 to 15 rep bar. Well, one or two reps short of failure. You're putting the weight down and then you're continuing the set and you're continuing the set 10 to 15 seconds later going for that three to five rep range for the remaining sets. So the first set, you're supposed to fail in that hypertrophy rep range around 10 to, 10 to 15 reps. When I say fail, not complete failure. You wanna come just before failing, about one rep before failing. So if you could hit 15, you would stop at 14. Put the weights down, rest 15 to 20 seconds, grab that weight again and go for another three to five reps. And you wanna go for as many consecutive sets of hitting the same number of reps. So if you hit 14 on your first clip, you rest 15 seconds, then you hit four reps. On the set one drop, then you wanna hit set four reps for set two, four reps for set three. The second you drop off from four, you stop the set. All right, set three. We're gonna have the band, we're gonna have the vest, the kettlebell, and the band on. We hit 15, 12, 10, increasing the intensity each set, meaning the load went up. Yeah, bro, Gerard, hamstrings are coming next, my brother.
For sure, Gary. Hope that helped you. Hope you understood what I was saying. So yeah, the Maya reps, they're gonna build up more hypertrophy. Remember, you're starting hypertrophy set, and then you stay working with that same load, same intensity, but under more fatigue. So you're gonna be pushing out. Your muscles are still gonna have that blood. It's never gonna get the chance for that blood to disperse. It's gonna be high lactic acid buildup as well. I'm gonna go one more set of the Bulgarians. It's a drop set now. Just with the vest on, we're gonna do a little bit of explosive movement. So watch guys. Same setup as always. Right limb first. Just five reps each leg guys. Five explosive Bulgarians to step four. Now we're gonna work on the posterior legs. The glutes and the hamstrings specifically. Hit. So, we're going to squat, any type of squatting exercise you're going to do. Explosive, those Bulgarians, split squats, regular squats. They're going to target the entire leg. Well, not too much the calves, but they will target both the hamstrings and the glutes. Apparently, they're mostly going to be glute dominant, but you will get hamstring work in there. But I always like to do isolation work for the hamstrings and glutes. So remember, the way you isolate the posterior legs is you're going to have to get into a hinging type exercise. Stiff leg deadlifts or Romanian deadlifts are my two favorite if you do body weight or compound type exercises. When you got machines and cables, it's a lot easier to isolate them without having to do a hinging movement. But if you're doing body weight, the way you're gonna get that full stretch and contraction of the hamstrings and glutes is you're gonna have to get into a hinging type exercise. So demonstrate body weight only, right? First thing you do is you stick the foot down and back. That's what's gonna create your chest to drop down. That's what's gonna create the break in the hips, right? So you stick your foot down and back, and you let your chest lean you down. The legs stay slightly bent. You do not bend your knees. The second you start bending your knees too much, you're gonna lose that engagement of the hamstrings and the glutes. So a slight bend is key. You don't want to be completely stiff. Slight bend just like that, and then you just stick your butt back. Look, the knee angle doesn't move. I'm just dragging my hands down to mid shit line. Mid shit line, you're gonna have full contraction of the hamstring. You come here, you guys are gonna come up and squeeze up through the glutes. So almost like you're thrusting and pumping the air like that. Down, but come back. Look, slight bend the knees, not bent like that. Once I come down, quads take over. If I'm here, Hamstrings take over. Come up and squeeze. So, I'm gonna demonstrate how you guys can do this. No, you want you want to be basically you want to drag your the weight, the barbell, or your hands in contact with the body. You don't ever want to be like this. Look, guys, you never want to be like this. You don't ever want to have the weight in front of you. If the weight's in front of you, you're putting too much stress on the low back. Remember, you've got to center the load into your center of your body. So the weight and the hands stay in contact. If I had a barbell, same thing with deadlifts. The barbell runs up the shins. If I have dumbbells, the dumbbells in my hands are sliding down the shins. You understand? You don't ever want to have a load in front of your body like that. So let me demonstrate how you guys could do this with just resistance bands. So look, you guys want to do this with just resistance. You got only resistance bands and 
no weights to add resistance or load, right? Remember, step on the band, go on your feet. I'll show you from the front first. Just about shoulder width apart to slightly in. Now remember, this band is going to be long, so what you're going to have to do is grab it down low. One hand on each side of the band. There's going to be extra band left over, but it does not matter. So from here, guys, there's tension. Stand up straight, one. Hinge back down, feel the stretch, mid shit line, two, three. Let me show you from the side. Remember guys, slight bend the knees, hands down, hands come to mid shit line. Right when you start to feel the tension of the band dissipate, stand up, squeeze it through the glutes and the hamstrings, get that resistance from the band, full tension at the top. Here you want to fully block out each rep, hinge back down, up. Back down, up. Now, another way you guys can make this even more challenging is to make it a unilateral exercise. Remember, no, guys, no, I still got no, the 10 no, pound vest on. Up. Leave them, leave them, man. Let them go. Remember, unilateral exercise. Make it harder. Now you gotta work stabilization of the ankle, knee, and hip. Same thing. Slight bend the knees, right hand comes to the left foot. Definitely a lot harder. Watch, guys. Plus, I got the 20 pound vest on. Tap. Come up and squeeze. Tap. Come up and squeeze. Tap. Come up and squeeze. I'm just go to the right. They pull three pretty easy on the left. One. Two. Three. Now let me demonstrate with the kettlebell. So you guys can also do this with one weight, two weight, two dumbbells, two kettlebells. Doesn't matter, the weight always stays in the front of your body and drags down the leg. So, with the kettlebell now, from the side, kettlebell is in front of me, feet are pointed straight, slight bend in the knees, drag the kettlebell down, comes to here, up one. Two. Three. Now, let me explain something to you guys why I said for this you want to fully lock out. If you guys do not fully lock out at the top of the rep, you guys are going to lose the glute engagement and it's going to focus solely more on the hamstrings, right? So if you're only doing this range of motion as opposed to this, so you're hinging down and coming up to here, back down, coming up to here, you're pretty much going to put more stress on just the hamstrings. Once you come to full lockout and you're at flexion of the glutes and you're squeezing the glutes, that's when you get the glute engagement as well as the hamstring engagement. So depending on what you want to focus on for the session, typically what I do is around four sets of this total. I'll do set one, full repetition where I'm hitting everything. Set two, I'll do more of a hamstring isolation. Then set three, again, full range of motion. Then set four, more isolation work, just to get a little vary in it. So now we're gonna go to single leg, 60 pound, Romanian or stiff leg deadlifts or Romanian deadlifts we want to call them. My goal is to hit two more sets on you, so I just did a bunch of demonstration. I'm just six to eight reps each leg. So we're gonna start left leg first, and the right leg, right hand holds the weight. Down, one, two, three, four, five, one more. Remember, I got the 60 and the 20 on there.
That's all I'm doing for the direct hamstring glute work. Definitely feeling fried right now in the posterior chain. Told you, the, ha the squats and the explosive movements are gonna target the hamstrings as well. Yes, Blocky, you wanna keep those weights close. No, Joseph, it's not more stable balance. You're off balance if you do same weight, same leg. Because now, you gotta counterbalance with the core. Remember, look. If I'm doing right, right, the whole load is on my right side. When you do a counterbalance, the left is providing counterweight, forcing more stabilization and better contraction of the core. So it's opposite limb, opposite hand. Not saying you can't do it each limb, but it's more effective and beneficial to do it that way. All right, now guys, we end the routine off, of course, with calf work. So, I'm gonna start, now I'll do same limb, same hand. One, two, three. Right? It's going to limit your range of motion. Watch, guys. When you can increase the range of motion, I'm going to show you that next. Because those single legs are a little tough, right? 80 pounds on each leg with the stabilization. It was a little hard for me right there. So now I'm going to do a drop set on this set and go two at a time. Ready? So I'm going to hold the kettlebell right in the front. And now we go. That was two legs at a time. Remember, obviously every single leg exercise is gonna be a little harder. The whole load is now on one limb and you gotta work that stabilization factor. And the reason why my right's a little weaker in stabilization than the left was due to the fact that I broke that right foot two or three times when I was a kid and I never properly rehabbed it. So the stabilization of the right has always been a little weaker. That's why I always focus for a while. Every time I did the Romanian deadlifts, or the, I mean the Bulgarian split squats, I would always train the right limb first because I would always break during the right set, right? The same way you guys saw me doing the single legs I was breaking. When I came to the, when I was doing the Bulgarian split squats, I couldn't do a straight set on my right foot. I would always lose balance. So I started focusing more and more on my right foot and the right leg and limbs got stronger in that movement than the left. So then after that happened, I had to start switching up to the left to focus first, to balance them back out. So let me show you guys. Well, one, we could demonstrate it right here. Now it's too high. So best, way you guys want to find to do uh, extra range of motion for your calves. You're going to find just a little ledge. You're good, Dad. Little ledge like that, right? So now, you're going to stand on the leg. Put your toes on the leg. And look, our ankles are going to be down, right? So our feet are going to be on an angle like this. So the movement's going to start, as opposed to being flat, if we're on a flat foot, Flat surface, remember, pretend my hand's my foot. If we're flat on the floor, we're doing calf raises, we can only pretty much come up with this range of motion, right? But now, if we start with our ankle, like our foot up like this, now we get this full range of motion, a deeper contraction, deeper stretch in the calf muscles in themselves. So, wanna do them with me on that side? Look, my dad's gonna do them too. Come on. Pressure. 
pressure, keep that balance aspect. So, so last guys, look at my feet. My toes are pointed up. Adding just that legs to it is going to increase the intensity of the workout, right? Remember, if I'm flat-footed right here, I can only get this high up, right? You're limited to how far you can get on your tippy toes. When you start with your toes already flexed up, now look at how much farther the rep goes, right? And on this way down, you really feel the whole calf muscle stretch out. So we're gonna hit two more sets of 20 there to finish it off, and we're gonna keep the brace real short. Remember, you guys are your calves can take a lot. You guys spend almost, you guys walk around every day. Everybody walks, everybody puts pressure on their legs and their calves. So it's gonna take a lot of effort and intensity to build up those calf muscles. So another 20 right away, let's go. Look guys, one more set of that. Uh, Ashley Nichols, do, a lot of, do, do I do a lot of mobility work? Typically I would say, I, don't, I do do mobility work very often. A lot of it, I wouldn't consider it a lot, I consider it specific. Every workout before I train, I always do mobility for my shoulders, wrist work, oh, so I always go very thoroughly with shoulder full range of motion exercises, as well as wrist stretches and wrist mobility. Hips, ankles, I work on more when I'm typically gonna be using them for like squatting exercise or if I'm doing any type of overhead press, I'll typically warm up my hips and my ankles. But it's always pretty much specific or if I'm doing like an active recovery day when I'm literally like touching a little bit of everything at low volume and low intensity, I'll always do some mobility work in there as well. But yeah, I'm definitely big on being able to be fluid and work your body and the muscles through their full range of motion, which is gonna require mobility. Let's go dad, set three. Let's go guys, last set. So guys, we hit a few specific exercises targeting the quads. We hit the explosive jumps. We got, even though they're targeting the quads, they hit the full leg. We hit the Bulgarian split squats. We hit the single leg RDLs. We hit the pistol squats. Now, just to end off, like I said, we're gonna hit on all modalities of the training. We're gonna do explosive movements. We're gonna do hypertrophy reps. Now we're gonna work on a little bit of endurance. So to finish off the routine, going back to my platform. Give you guys a better view. And we're gonna do one burnout set. Now where the volume will come up. Like I said, I don't do, I'm not one to like to do sets of 30, 40 rep squats, right? Or pretty much, especially for legs, cause I, my legs, I train legs all the time. I like to do, I like to keep the intensity high, being the load. My, my body weight, 
the intensity of my body weight is not great enough for me to stimulate muscle growth body weight alone pretty much that's why you see me doing the explosive work the single leg work if i was just to sit around all day and just do body weight squats it would just be more of an endurance based fa uh, factor until i really get fatigued and start working on the fatigue but now just to work that endurance at the end of the routine we're going to go one set remember i still got the 20 on 30 to 50 squats not full range of motion about 90 percent repetition so we're not going to come to lockout we're going to keep full tension on the legs Let's go. Now we're going to rep. Now we're literally, there's so much blood in the legs. Walking is tough at the end. You guys seeing it's full leg routine, utilizing just body weight, bands, and kettlebells. So you guys know, I literally am shaking right now. Bro, you already know these, this park, these bars, I've been on them 10 years now. And they haven't been renovated and they've been here for way longer than that so these are old school the og bars all right guys living live 58 minutes right now full leg routine so you guys can see my legs are literally swole blown up right now so if you guys think we don't train legs out here don't get it twisted. We train legs and we hit the skill work for calisthenics. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. The reason why I haven't seen many of body workouts, again, I can't do too much on my hands right now. Hopefully within a day or two, they'll be rehealed. I'll we'll be back doing reps and sets on the bar. So you guys saw the last live was Monday. When we did the five minute drills, two five MDs. And again, even though I was my hands were fucked up throughout the whole video. I was telling you guys, all my pulls were done on my fingertips, keeping the pressure off the cut. When I was on the push-ups, I was grabbing the hand on the floor like this, keeping the palm off the floor. But I cannot do push-ups on the bar yet, because it's inevitable that my hand and the cuts are gonna put directly apply pressure on that bar. So I've been avoiding that. I've been avoiding dips. Handstands are tough as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this routine. Full lower body. Yo, JR, this Biggie Duke Carter, he lost, bro, he started me 395. He's weighing in at 275 right now. So 120 pound weight loss in about 15 months. And just to clarify, he could have been down a lot more. Starting in September, we took him off of his cut. So at, in September, he was 280, eating 2,400 calories. He's now up to 2,800 calories, almost at 3,000 again and he lost another five pounds. So we increased his calories back up from the 2,400 and he still lost another five pounds. The goal was to keep him in a five to 10 pound weight range, increasing the calories. I even told him, listen, if you go up five pounds in weight, don't worry about it. Cause now when we're back up to 3,000 cows, we can cut you back down a lot easier again. And again, we started at 280 on the bulk and he still lost five pounds, increasing the calories. So around January, Fifth, maybe mid-January to the beginning of February we'll start cutting him again I want to get him on a strict consistently eating 3,000 calories for a few weeks before we start the cut again so stay tuned for more Biggie progress I appreciate all you that tuned in say peace out peace out we got scrap here lounging and uh, I'll see you guys at the next live 
I'm waiting for a new hard drive to come. Then I'll be uploading more actual regular videos. But uh, I like doing the lives. I'm sure you guys like them too. Again, there's a little more engagement. So one more time, guys. Full leg routine. My next leg day will most likely be, again, doing barbell work in that single, in that one to five rep range, working on more strength. So and the way I do that, guys, if you watch, like I said, Sunday, I was hitting 290 for sets of one. Strength work, right? One to five rep range. The previous strength session, we were working at 255 for five by five. And on the rep session, it's more body weight or stuff like this, or I'm working at a lower weight on the bar, but maybe like 235, and you see me hitting sets of 10. So I always vary the intent of the workout, whether I'm focusing on strength or hypertrophy. For my barbell work, and when we come to the park, it's more volume, and we're touching on everything. Like always, guys, I appreciate everyone that tuned in. Like the video, leave a comment. I'll answer back if I missed any of your questions. And peace out, guys. Bar Naturals. See you at the next one. Same shoes we have, too. Yep. <laughs>